Welcome to Ashley Marie. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make this minion cake. This is Kevin as he grew into a giant minion and exploded out of Scarlet Overkill's house. Let's get started. We're gonna start with his eyes to give them time to dry. So this is about a third of an inch of white fondant. I used a two and a half inch biscuit cutter to cut two eyes and I'm smoothing them out with my finger so they kind of get that nice eyeball bulge. Then I'm gonna cut them again once I've smoothed them over with that same biscuit cutter so that they have a nice crisp edge and side. Do that to both. Now I take some brown and black fondant and marbleize it together and using a 2A tip, I use the wide side to cut out his irises. By, um, by marbleizing them, they give them some really nice depth. Now take some black fondant that I've rolled super thin as well and use the smaller side of that same 2A tip to create the pupils and attach those as well. Then take an itty bitty bit of white fondant, create a nice little thought and press it on to the eyeball in between the pupil and the iris and kind of give it that nice little glow. Now the gray fondant, we're gonna use a lot of this for the goggles. You wanna roll it out about a third of an inch thick again, nice and long, cut straight down the center. Use that same biscuit cutter to give yourself a little template that you're gonna follow and cut along that line as well. You're gonna to wanna to cut two of these. Wrap each of them around the biscuit cutters. Now I have two biscuit cutters and I think that's really necessary to create these goggles. Wrap it around and glue the seam together with some clear alcohol or vodka of some kind. Do that for both. Then cut a nice flat layer in between where the two meet. See how it's nice and flat? That's how I'm gonna attach them together. So again, clear alcohol or vodka, attach them together and we're gonna let them dry. But before they dry completely, you're gonna take a six inch cake circle because that's the size that he is, a six inch cake. And you're gonna mark along where you want to cut out. Cause you know, we want these goggles to fit around the cake, not just stick out hugely in front of them. So by cutting out this little half circle, they're gonna fit around the cake really nicely. Take a very long strip of that same gray fondant that you rolled out really thin. This is about, I wanna say a half an inch wide and wrap it around both bases of the goggles and then cut out some circles. And these are like the goggle nuts. They just add a nice little detail and depth to the goggles. So glue those, uh, you know, about seven around. Now cut out two little tubes and kind of smooth them and round them out. And now take the back of the knife, the dull side, and mark lines in them. Now these are gonna be the, the hinges where the band and the goggles meet. Now put aside the gray fondant and get out some black. First up, we're gonna create the buttons. So some slightly thick fondant, cut out some circles, and then using a ball tool, create some little indentations. Now take the rest of the black fondant, roll it out into like three quarters of an inch and cut it in half. These are gonna be our shoes and we want them to match. So by rolling it out together and then cutting it in half, we, uh, we can make sure that they look exactly the same. So cut out the shoe shape a little bit wider in the front, a little bit narrower in the back. That's the sole and the heel. Now these are really rough as you can see right now. So the first thing we wanna do is smooth the edges. So the top is nice and rounded where his foot's gonna be in, but the back, you can leave that uh, thicker and higher because it's like the boot part. Now along the sole, you wanna cut out a little, a little wedge and that's gonna be the area between the sole and the heel and then take the back of the knife and make a line around it. That gives it a nice little detail. Now take some more black fondant and create two like fat teardrop shapes. Take your ball tool and the narrow part of the teardrop, you're gonna widen out and kind of hollow. That's gonna be the cuff of his glove. So, and his hand's gonna have to fit down into it. So you wanna make sure it has enough room for his hand. Now take the rest of it, kind of flatten it and make it almost a kind of triangle-ish shape. This is gonna be his, his hand. Now he has two fingers and a thumb. So as you can see on the left-hand side, we have his thumb, which is a little bit, little bit smaller, and then his two big, huge, fat fingers. So soften those edges where we just cut. Now don't forget, your, hand, your thumb and your hands don't just go straight into your wrist. They kind of bulge out a little bit. So see how it kind of has a nice little bulge, doesn't just go straight into the wrist. Now he's sitting with his hands at his side. So we want to pull the cuff of his glove up. So his hands kind of sticking down. We want it to dry in that shape. Use the back of the knife to create some glove wrinkle lines as well and set those aside to dry. Now add some powdered gum text to your black fondant that will strengthen it and push it out through an extruder in thin lines and leave those aside to dry. Those are gonna be strips of his hair. Now time for the cake carving, always my favorite part. This is a 12 inch cake that we're just carving into a mound. This is gonna be the broken down castle that he's sitting on top of. So it doesn't have to be perfect. 
carve it, ganache it, and then cover it with some marbleized fondant uh, by adding a little bit, little itty bitty bit of black and mixing it, but not all the way into the white fondant, you get a marbleized effect. Now trim that nice and even with a sharp knife and we're gonna move on to Kevin. This is an eight inch cake base and this is going to be his, his bottom where his bottom sits on top of the castle. So just kind of round it a little bit and then flip it over. Put a six inch cake on top of that, slightly off centered. Now where the six inch is closer to the eight inch, that's gonna be his back side. So it's gonna kind of bulge out just a little bit where his bottom kind of pooches. And then that front where we have more space, that's gonna be his kind of tummy pooch that he has going on while he's sitting down and kind of leaning forward a little bit. So now it's time to add some strength and structure to our cake. So add some dowels, add a six inch cake board, and then a dowel all the way through the center to hold it together. Now I wanna attach this to the mound already. So I put some parchment paper down to protect the white fondant from all the ganache we're going to be using. Press that long, long, long down all the way down to the bottom of the cake and then top the whole thing off with a half ball pan, nice and rounded. And cover the whole thing with ganache. You can see his body start to take shape, how he's kind of leaning forward a little bit. He's got that pooch little tummy. Once the ganache is set, I actually sketched out lines where I want everything to go. Now we're putting the yellow fondant on top and I'm cutting that fondant right where his goggle line is gonna be. It'll get covered up later. This way I can add the fondant without worrying too much about seams. Same thing around his body, wrap it around, putting the nice fondant in the front and then just creating a seam in the back. And now we're gonna cut lines again where they're gonna easily get covered. His arms are next. These were a little bit tricky. I created tubes of chocolate ganache that I wrapped in yellow fondant and then cut. This is gonna be under his arm so you won't actually see this seam later. Now we're gonna put it up against his body. So cut off the excess that we don't need. See how I still have like some fanned out where his arm is. See that little fondant sticking up? That's gonna go on the X where I put a mark on the ganache previously for his arm. Now just stretch that fondant out and then cut it right along those lines. Now that line is gonna be covered with the strap from his, uh, his overalls, so easy peasy to hide. Take the other edges and smooth them down into the ganache. That's where his uh, jeans are gonna go over, so we don't want like a bulge from the yellow fondant. Take two strips of the blue fondant, kind of thick to help cover things up, and put them one on each side. Those are the sides of his denim. Take a big panel and press it along the back, and then cut it into the jean shape, how it kind of goes wider at the bottom. And now add seam lines and stitch lines. You know, you use any tools that you can get. Now comes my favorite part. We're adding his cute little stubby legs sticking out in front, adding to that little pooch he has of a belly. So I just took, again, big, huge chunks of ganache. Let's face it, it's basically just a truffle. I think I'd rather eat his truffle legs than his cake body. Uh, anyway, add some more blue fondant to that. Press it in around all of those crevices and then cut off the excess. You also wanna cut the shape of the front of his jeans nicely here. This is gonna give us like the pocket and all of that stuff. So again, add another piece for the fondant and add all the details, all the stitch works and the lines. Next up, we're gonna add those straps and cover up the lines that we left, that seam between the yellow fondant from his arm and body. Add his shoes that we had left drying. I used skewers. Push that skewer in a little bit farther with an extra skewer and then cover it with a little bit of extra black fondant. Nobody will even notice it was there. Narrow down his little wrist and then put it right inside those gloves that we created. And again, attach the gloves with a skewer. Skewers are great with cakes. Now attach the buttons and add some lines to make it look like the fabric is puckering where the buttons came from. Now it's time to add his hair. Use a skewer to kind of give yourself a guide hole and then press the hair down inside it. These hairs were really delicate, so that guide hole really kept them um, so that I could press them inside without them breaking. And you'll also notice that we created that black band to go around his head. Now before we press the goggles into place, I rolled out just a little bit more of that gray fondant and created a guide for myself. This is gonna be the front of our goggles just to really give it a nice smooth front, but don't attach it yet. I might have gone overkill on all of these skewers, but I did not want these goggles falling off. So using a cookie sheet to kind of give myself a flat surface, I pressed it into place and then I pushed the eyes down inside the goggles and then I attached the hinge covering up that skewer. Now attach a nice thin little half circle for his mouth and you can see where the skewer is kind of coming through the front of the goggle and I pushed so hard. Now is where that template that I made beforehand comes into place. It's going to give the front of our goggles a nice smooth pretty finish. 
Not that you can tell very well, but in the movie, he actually has crushed this castle and is standing amidst the rubble. So I made some chocolate uh, marbleized bricks and we're gonna just break it up and kind of just press it all around him. This is actually a really fun part for the kids to help with too. I mean, who doesn't love a destructed building? So Kevin's just sitting on top of rubble. There's no rhyme or reason. You can go crazy, push things wherever you want. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Please leave me a comment if you give this cake a try or if there's any other movie you wanna see a cake from. I hope you guys enjoyed this and now it's time for me to go be the host of my baby boy's fourth birthday party which is all about minions. If you click on the show more down below, there's links to everything, links to the party, links to all the recipes, uh, links to more videos on this and all of the decor and everything else that we did. So thanks for watching.